the crankcase all washed out and cleaned out the world today. What I'm saying doing, I'm going to assemble it and then paint it. I'll make a gasket for here and clean the barrel up and piston and try and get the barrel and piston back on in the big end reassembled and set up. I've got some gasket material here which is more or less the same thickness as what come off. So we'll make the this is the biggest gasket for the job, so we'll make that first. We need to use a bit of the centre for smaller gaskets. There's a few ways of doing it. Some people walk around with a, a dirty hand like that and then cut it with scissors. It's not the way I do it. What I do is I put the holes in first. I find the four holes, there's one there. The easiest way to cut a hole is to use a ball bearing. Put a ball bearing in and just tap it. And that cuts a nice, a nice neat hole. Put a bolt in there. And keep the gasket material nice and tight. There's the other one there. One there. There it is. We'll get the bits of bits of paper out of the holes later. I'm sure you can see all the, the dirty finger leaves a leaves a good mark. You can actually you can cut round that no problem. But the custom's got a nice sharp edge on. So what I'll do I'll use a hammer to cut it out and gently Gently tap round like that. Right, outside, cut out. Now I want the centre bit. Just the same. Put a black finger mark line on to give you a use the ball end of the hammer. Does make a, it makes a nice neat job. That's just about it. It was a regular thing making gaskets when I first started the motor trade. And I've got that bit out in the middle that we can use for a gasket for on the front of there or somewhere so it's not it's not wasted. Okay, so we're a nice fitting gasket for on there. Put that away somewhere safe. Hang it up. Do a little bit of bit of cardboard out the holes. Don't do any harm in there anyway. Right, that faces. Nice and clean. So this is what I sold that barrel and piston. I'm not going to take the piston out, there's no need to. Uh, the only thing you do take it out, you might risk damaging a damaging a ring. All I'll do I'll clean this mating face up, clean the dirty oil off this and just reassemble it. Get the remains of the gasket off. See the, the little end bear in there. Retain and bolt held in with a split pin, a couple of oil holes and a piston. It's a cast iron piston and there's no no play at all on that gudgeon pin.
It's a real nice fit in that bore. Beautiful and smooth. You can see the, the big end bearings here, they're not shell bearings. That's actually Babbitt metal that's been cast into the rod and hand scraped. But it'll been bored out and then hand scraped. You can see the scrape marks on it. There, there, the big end bolts. And BSF. 3 BSF. I've got a split pin hole through. And a shape proof washer. And here we just have a, a bolt going straight in with nothing retaining it. A stretch bolt just tightened. I think when they did this, they believed in belt and braces. Right, so we've got this cleaned up. I think now we can put the put the barrel back on top of the on top of the crankcase. Get the big end fastened back on. Like I say, I'm going to paint it, but I'm going to assemble it all first, or assemble most of it anyway. There's two cutouts in the crankcase. I think they have just been for locating for machining. Uh, there's no there's no way in here that just that goes into them. That's the gasket we made. All I'm going to do is put a little bit of grease on here. There's various portions that people put on, used to put on. But grease is as good as anything. It means you can get it apart again. It's not exactly a high performance thing. I can't see it uh, giving any problems. A nice coat of grease. Helps things slide around. Helps things seal as well. Again, won't do any harm until the, until the oil gets around to it. Right, so that's my gasket on, lined up. Got the piston at the top of the stroke and the crank at the bottom, so we'll have no clearance issues when we come to when we come to lift it on. So there's a flat on the the barrel, which lines up with a flat on the crankcase, so you can't really go far wrong. It's a nice fit, it's a good little register, it's a nice, nice fit. Clean its face up once we get it this bit bolted down. Nothing can get down past the piston so it won't do any harm. Got the four bolted, bolted down. What I'll do, I'll just give them a quick clean up on the on the way I will. Here we've got our, our four bolts cleaned up with our thread, very coarse thread. Put a little bit of grease on them. Won't do any harm, it's had some tightening, nice and smooth. That means I'm not going to corrode in, you can get them out again. Centralise it, that's better. The pity manufacturers couldn't do that with some of the the stuff assembled today, especially in the motor trade, a little bit of grease on some boards would make a massive difference to my life anyway. Right, so they're on, all started. Pull them down nice and even. I don't know what the torque will be for them. I would imagine the FT will probably suffice. I'm sure you can imagine what FT stands for. I'm 
with our big ab woods. I've taken it very FT. Walk here. Next thing is we've got to assemble this, the big end. We need plenty of oil on the, plenty of oil on the crank pin. And gently push the, the con rod down. And that's the bearing located. Now we're going to get the bolt through and get the cap on. I'll just clean the bolts up a little bit. Whenever you're working on an old gear like this, it pays you to keep the nuts and bolts together. That nut with that bolt. I mean, that would be a standard thread, that would be BSF. But they've probably been, they've been there together for a long time and they may have even been fitted. You know, the best nut shows for the best bolt. Anyway, we'll put the bolts through. And then put the big end cap back on. One in. Right, let's see that one. What we're doing, grab me you and turn the Turn the crank up a little bit to go a bit more, a bit more room. That's it right down there. Definitely be easier if the piston was at the top now or certainly halfway up like that to get one side in. You can see the little pop mark I put on the on the end of the rod and there's a corresponding pop mark. There it is on the big end, on the big end cap. Just make sure they go back in back in the same place. A little bit of a little bit of oil. Come on. Right. That was fairly fairly painless. I can just get the nut on now. Let the shaky washer on first. And then the nut. And this one started. And back one on. Washer on. The nuts only go one way as well. I've got a, a flat face and a rounded face. That's some both started. What I should have done, I should have got the die grinder and knocked the knocked their rags off and say there. That's like a bastard razor blade that's cut my hands to ribbons. Anyway, I meant to do it and I didn't do it, so I wonder if the guy that originally put this together cut his hands as well. Right, one end running up. A bit of oil on the on the threads and on the bolts. 